Well, this is Spoon TV. We are coming to you live from uh, the Liberian Senate. Of course, uh, here today is the uh, confirmation hearing of the LBS Director General Designate, Honorable Eugene Lamy Fagon. This hearing is being presided over by the Senate Committee on Broadcast Chairperson, Senator Abraham Darius Delon. So I'd like to say welcome. Thanks for joining us.
So let me say a very big welcome to you and your family of supporters, friends in the back. You are all welcome to our campus. This hearing is about to understand, getting to understand the suitability of the nominee to this position. And so we'll all do it together while you are here and we'll make that decision as a committee moving forward. You are welcome to nominee. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. We have a final rule here. To those in the gallery, no clapping, no booing. We know some people came to support, some people came to witness the process. Senators will ask questions. Some will seem annoying. Some will seem hard questions. But to you, the supporters, no chair, no moon. In the senators, I'll present his statement. Each senator will have 10 minutes. The chair will determine additional time as the need arises. Ms. Bobo Tan Corisaros, as representative for Rufa County in this Senate. Thank you. My name is Wellington T. Von Smith, Senator for the Lossess County. Edwin Snow, member of this community. My name is Jonathan Borcha Sobit, I represent the people of the Middle East. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. <clears throat> Honorable members of the Library Senate, Honorable Chairperson of the Committee, Officials of Government, here present, members of the Fourth Estate, fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen. I stand before you today as a nominee for the position of Director General of the Library Broadcasting System. About six years ago, I had the opportunity to stand before this body for the position of Deputy Minister of the Press. A huge oversight. So you will please pause, you will go, you will start over, but you will have to be placed on a court. They sat me at you and then you were running the wheel and said, yes, you are the owner. Then sat me at hand, will place you appropriately on off, after which you can proceed with the statement. One year, you sat me at hand. I, Eugene Lamine Fadon, Director General of the of the Library Broadcasting System, do we have a swear? Do we have a swear? The testimony I am about to give. The testimony I am about to give. It's the truth. It's the truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Yeah. So help me God. Mm. Spoon with carry from there. Thank you. Is there a nominee for this step? And you can proceed down with the statement. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Honorable members of the Library Senate, again, 
Honorable Chairman, officials of government here present, members of the fourth estate, fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen. I stand before you today as a nominee for the position of Director General of the Librarian Broadcasting System. About six years ago, I had the opportunity to stand before this body for the position of Deputy Minister for Press and Public Affairs, Ministry of Information, Culture Affairs, and Tourism. Let me seize this opportunity to thank President Joseph Newman Borkai for this historic nomination and assure him that if confirmed, his dream of having the LBS return to the number one spot as a public broadcasting system for all Liberians to come to reality and be realized. Let me thank all family, friends, relatives, and especially my mother, Ms. Maima Baula Wright, my siblings, etc., who stood by me all these years, especially Ms. Della H. Smith, my kids, Bisia, Zena, Joy, Eugene, Eudoria, Fangon. I'll be ungrateful if I forget to say thank you to the many supporters, fans, well wishers, citizens, especially the friends of Van Gogh. A big thank you to all of you. Honorable members of the Library Senate, I am no stranger to broadcasting, be it television or radio. I am no stranger to the media, be it in the mainstream media, the print media, the electronic media, or social media. I do not wish to remind myself of my days with King FM, King's FM, sorry, LIB 24, etc. in 2017. I do not wish to tell my story working as Deputy Minister for Press and Public Affairs, managing government media relations and information for almost four years. I can only try to remember my role on the now famous Spoon TV and the famous evening program Spoon Talk. However, this hearing presents an opportunity for me to be able to rescue the state-run broadcasting system if confirmed by this honorable body. The challenges at LBS requires immediate attention with expedited <coughs> urgency. Not to take up much of your time, let me bring you up to speed with just few of the challenges and that together, if confirmed, and with, and with us, understaffing. The once vibrant 260 staff LBS is now staffed at 146 personnel. In 2021, I'm told that government pension 37 individuals. With the six appointed individuals that we all know after the transition gone, three persons seriously ill, two persons now listed for pension, the question then becomes a matter of how we effectively and efficiently run a system that is understaffed. With 24 contractors, many of whom with contracts that have ended last year, the system is faced with a, with a threat of functionality. Seven outstations, most of whom were out until last week, I'm told they were, they were all put back on. The one in Bong, Lofa, Bomi, Basso, Sino, Grand Jude, Maryland County. The Chinese technical group were helping with six substations, excluding Sino, which is an LBS owned project. We have technical problems, I'm told. A 10 kilowatt transmitter delivered by the Chinese cannot be used due to numerous problems ranging from 250 kVA transformer that should at least be 500 kVA transformer. Currently, the LBS is using a 3 kilowatt transmitter for 89.9. 97.7 and 99.9 .9 FM stations. Fuel consumption. 
or Jenner Rivers. 186,000 used annual, example of which will be $15,000 used per month on the main station to attain 3,000 gallons of fuel for the month. The seizure and encroachment on the properties, and in particular the land of the LBS, remains a serious threat to the existence of the institution. We are informed that the Liberian Rural Communications Network in Banka, Bong County, was taken over by Representative Marvin Cole, where he renovated a studio building and has a private radio FM station fully operational now. The old transmitter site is now referred to as Gobacho Market. The system lacks logistics. They lack insurance. They lack equipment. They lack training opportunities. And they have underpaid staffings. They lack the human resource capacity, we are informed. Honorable Chairman, members of the Liberian Senate, these challenges require expedited, solution-driven attention. To achieve this, we must employ a team-driven approach to ensuring that these challenges are confronted head-on. If confirmed, I pledge to lead this effort, making sure that the urgency with which I am presenting these challenges will be the same urgency and energy I will bring to bear in finding lasting solutions, working with the team in collaboration with the members of the legislature, our partners, our customers, our donors, etc. Where there is a way, there must be a will. I believe, with your help, oversight, the following challenges requiring immediate attention can be addressed. Effective and efficient staffing for LBS. A fully functional and operationalized LBS. A technical, a technical support, sorry, second to none, to include maintenance and training of our technicians to confront current realities in the broadcast industry. Reclaiming LBS properties for the proper and purposeful use intended. That is, to benefit all Liberians. Logistics, insurance, whether health, health or risk insurance, equipment, training, etc. Consideration for solar power energy to cut costs and promote efficiency at all of our stations across the country is confirmed. Members of the committee, members of the Liberian Senate, if confirmed, LBS will live up to the true meaning of its existence, taking into consideration Article 15A to E, especially C, the right to be informed, and D, having access to state-owned media by all. The LBS will become a public broadcasting system for all Liberians, regardless of political affiliation, religious preferences, social status, etc. If confirmed, LBS will entertain, educate, promote cultural and traditional values, growth and development, etc. LBS will innovate and motivate, enlighten our citizens as well. If confirmed, LBS will pay, will play, sorry, a pivotal role in the socio-economic and political advancement of our beloved country, Liberia. With the necessary support and an increase in budgetary appropriations, the LBS can once again become the beacon of hope where our citizens can once again enjoy the benefit of media in all its present day availability. That is print, electronic, social media, and now artificial intelligence. Honorable Chairman, members of the Library Senate, I want to thank you for your service to country and assure you that if confirmed, I will try my best to ensure that LBS is second to none in the area of broadcasting 
both television and radio. May God continue to bless the works of our hands. So, let me leave. You're just listening to uh, the so we make additional covers. And here we get all the original funds. If that's what we do, we can do the covers and things that. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So we now go to um, question and answer for interaction. Each senator will engage you for 10 minutes. Ask you your answer. If you don't feel comfortable answering the question, feel free to say you are not comfortable to answer. Thank you. So we'll begin with Senator Nathan Magir of Martini County. Thank you. All right, that's my name. We'll start with Senator Samus. Yeah, so you can be here. Senator Momofa. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much for the Good afternoon, Mr. Nomini. Um, for me, I want to appreciate the government to present the part of the community to this position. Uh, I know you have been a broadcast even for quite a long time, you have a vast experience. So I wish you well in your endeavors and make the FBS good for us. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Momo of Lofa County. No. You deserve it. Senator Jim Mosman of Lofa County. And from your presentation, you showed the people of Liberia that you will go slightly outside of the established norms in Liberia that when you are managing your PC or the Minister of Information, you should only be pretty single for the government. And your presentation said that EWBC will be for all Liberians. This particular assurance was a conversation you had with President Joseph Walker as a policy statement of his government. Let me interact. Thank you, thank you. Uh, that one was a a conversation I had with him, uh, Honorable Senator, that's the way it should be. And the President shared his vision with me, and I concur with his vision. And I think um, LBS is a state-owned media entity, and the Constitution is very specific as to Liberians having full access to the state-run media entity. And I think that's the way it should be. You said it should be. The show is different from the reality. Yes, sir, I acknowledge that. That was what it has presented itself to be in the past, not even the last six years, but over the years before. 
that as a nation, as we grow stronger and get to understand our rights and get to appreciate, uh, appreciate the Constitution, <coughs> it's only fair that we live by the law. It's a state-run media institution, therefore it belongs to all Liberians, regardless of party, religion, status, gender, etc. The how it should be is a good one. Over 10 years from the administration of President Saleh to the administration of President William, there has been a draft law then gathering dust on the shelf to transform the EWC legislative, not Google, to transform it to a state broadcaster. Where do you stand on the issue? Will you resurrect that particular draft bill and bring it to the legislature? Honorable Senator, I believe that is the right thing to do. I will work in collaboration with all the others to make it happen. But the truth of the matter is, the law says in Article 15 that no Liberian citizen should be denied access to the state run media. So the law will only strengthen what the Constitution has already provided. And so LBS, a state run media entity, will be for all Liberians. And the law that is crafted and the bill that is about to be submitted, I'm told, will be fully su supported by me simply because it will only go a long way to strengthen the already existing law uh, uh, constitutionally. Eugene Lamin Fadon. Yes, sir. That is well known. Yes, sir. You will be caught up between the rock and the hard place, managing the state broadcasters, dealing with independent journalism, and being an advocate or activist. Please explain your role in the three areas as you intend to sell the Workers Administration Information Act. Thank you very much. Well, Honorable Senator, I cannot explain my role other than the role assigned to me by the act that created the LDS. And that role is to formulate and implement policies of the Librarian Broadcasting System in collaboration with my deputies. That is the rule assigned to me by the act that created the Librarian Broadcasting System. And I will not perform outside of that rule other than the rule assigned to me as a term of reference by the act that created the system. Thank you, Mr. Stingman's colleague from the Western County. We'll now uh, move over to Senator Evan Davis of Bobby County, followed by Senator Nathan McGill of McGee. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Nuri, how are you? Are you, are you on drugs? No, sir. Have you taken a drugs test? No, sir, but I'm prepared, prepared to take, take one. one. I'm prepared are you to take one now? Right now, I'll take one. Are you sure you're not on drugs? Right now, I'll take a drug test. I'm not on drugs. Have you, have you taken drugs before? No. The president said drugs would be public enemy number one. The president who has nominated you has taken his drug test to the vice president. Why have you deliberately refused to take your drug test? Honorable Senator, I have not refused to take my drug test. As I said, and I say again, even right now, if it's available, I'm ready to take Why now? Why are you disrespecting the president? Uh, I'm only a, a nominee. Have you done your asset declaration? I'm only a nominee. I uh, have not done that, sir. So the president declared his asset. You refuse to do yours. The I'm president took drug tests. You refuse to take drug tests. I haven't refused to take drugs, drug tests. I haven't refused to declare my asset. The law requires, as an official of government, uh, for me to declare my asset. And when I become an official of government, if confirmed by you, sir, I will declare my asset. Do you deserve my vote? Yes, sir. Give me two reasons why I should vote for you. The first reason is I'm qualified. The second reason, I'm a son of Bomi, and you are my representative. So, okay, I'm looking at your education qualification. I see you have uh, academic qualification. I see you have two A degree. Then I see you in the right of the off, on, off. What do you mean of on, off? Honorable Senator, I don't only have two A degree. The 
It should have been full actually, but I have three. That's what I'm reading. I brought them with me. It's uh, on my credentials there, you see three. One is in general education, one is in social work, one is in political science. I also brought my bachelor's degree, my honor society certificate, and those documents are accompanied by transcript sealed by the various institutions. So if you, if you request them, sir, I'll present them. You want to show me where they have for the last time on your, that the government gave us? Uh, yeah. The bachelor's is right here. No, no, no. no. What you give us? I see general education, I see social work. Okay, you know, brother Gabriel, on off. I know you know, on off. No, when I attended the university, it came up to during the war. You and I went to school together, honorable senators. So when we were at the university, the war struck us. So on and off, and then we fled. No, I didn't brother that brother was no war. No, I am saying you, when I we went to see Dominic together, we didn't go to the brother. Yeah, so... Are you confused? No, definitely not. Do you have any regrets why you were dismissed as a young man? Partially, I'll say yes, because I thought I was serving my people and I was doing the right thing and I told the truth. So, he fired me. Yes, I do have regrets that I did not have the opportunity to serve the library people to the full potential that I have. And so I regret that part. But having been dismissed, I moved on. What will you do differently in this new post? In this new post, what I think I will do differently is I will not be defending the government, but as such as my time of reference entails, I will be formulating and implementing policies and programs for the library broadcasting system. So the role will be different, and I'll do it differently. Do you believe in your previous post you blindly defended the government and sometimes overdid it? Or go blindly before they uh, Senator, uh, the opinions expressed more often by Liberians are opinions and they are entitled to it. And sometimes they will say I blindly, sometimes they will say I overly. But then what do you say to the people who support me? Or what do you say to seditions that are also Liberians? What would you say to independents? They will say you did us a heck of a job. So again, it's, it's the kind of thing that you're between the rock and the hard place, you can't please everyone, you do the best, and you do it to the best of your ability. Are you a better Eugene Patron or the same Eugene Patron? Well, my name says I'm Eugene Patron. Um, I've always stood for the truth. I don't think I'm a better Eugene Patron. I just think that as you know, you get older, you get mature, you grow, you move from... But all of us, you more mature. Uh, everything will be is, is given growth. Is that happen? Yes, sir. Congratulations on having my vote. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You. Yes, sir. I know I know you better than I know you. You know, the. The realm of preaching and uh, very happy to use all that here. Maybe that's one of those rhetorical questions. But in actuality, the very serious question. And Senator Jim Watson may also raise it. You are a propagandist. And for your own presentation, EFB should be neutral. EFB should belong to all Iberians. The history of EFB has always been that those who control EFB will always take a violent position to the extent that people from other political institutions or political belief will be denied the right to view their opinion on EFBC. I want to ask you, are you very well committed to the principles as you are ascribed in your presentation that EFBC will not go all right there and you will not be in a propaganda war? 
say, no, the president of the world is gone, man. I want to make sure the government is alive. I saw somebody to be you go after the idea of a DOE. You do your fight and treasure. Thank you, Honorable Senator. Um, like I said, it's like the game of football. When you are a defender, you play number five. When, when you are a striker, you must score. And I'm sure the Honorable Senator Jonathan Walsh is so, so well aware. When I worked in the government, yes, I was, I was a midfielder. And I, as Deputy Minister for Press and Public Affairs, I played a role in this new feat I have a role to play, and that is to formulate programs and policies for the system to work in the interest of the people. I'm fully backed by Article 15. So yes, LBS will be for all Liberians. And if anybody knows anything about being victimized, in 2017, when you served as chairman, we went to the state-run broadcasting system to have our program aired, and we were denied. Under my leadership, if confirmed, that will not happen. Article 15 will be my reliance and the instruction given to me by His Excellency President Joseph Numa Boakai to make LBS a public run radio and television broadcast system. That reality will be fully felt by the people of this country. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just want to wish you all the best, Eugene. I know you're good. I know your passion for this country. You work with me day and night trying to. Make sure that I'm doing better. Everybody in the country is working in this state. So I just want to wish you all the best, my brother. Go ahead and do what you like. Be watching you. I know you love propaganda, but I'll be watching you. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Magin. The Valkyrie of the Committee, Senator, Senator Silver of the Department, is also the Chairman of the Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <laughs> on the money, on the money committee. <laughs> 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 Mr. Nomini, uh, let me congratulate you for your preferment. Um, we know of you and we'll speak about you in different forms and I know that uh, no one will say you don't know of this job. So let's say it that way. So I have a few concerns. What is your thoughts around broadcasting on your national television in sign language for the year? Thank you, Honorable Senator. I've always had a passion for Liberians with disabilities. Uh, and I've always felt that they've been treated unfairly. As I walk in here today, uh, some people were privileged to watch that, I saw a visually impaired woman trying to climb the stairs with a cane that had no reflectors only, no color coding, it was old. And I knew I had five canes for the blind brought in from the States. I immediately sent my driver back to the car and he brought the cane and I shared the king with her, she was very excited. And she told me a story that she was broadcasting on voice and as well as OKFM, teaching people to understand the blind, especially in terms of crossing the road, being able to assist them, recognizing the king and what have you. But her inability to access phones denied her and the program was just recently taken off the air. Honorable Senator, if confirmed, the blind, uh, the visually impaired, sorry, are Liberians. People with disability are Liberians. And the law says, no citizen. If confirmed, we will do our best to return her to the airwaves so that she can educate Liberians on how to care for visually impaired people and how to recognize the king so they are not run over. Uh, sound language, normally people will say that people are dumb, they're deaf, those words have been uh, taken back now. All Liberians with disability will be accommodated if I'm confirmed, especially educating the general public on how to handle them. Thank you. That was moving. <clears throat> Quite recently I had a conversation with the 
Director General, the last one, but I'm billeted, regarding the presence of ELBC in our chambers doing our plenary deliberations. What's your take on that? Well, again, Article 15 is very clear. The right of the people to be informed. It is not a privilege. It is a right. And the legislature seems to have the responsibility to make laws, provide oversight, and represent the people of this country. And if there are major issues, except otherwise, it should be covered to the benefit of the Nigerian people. Just because a person lives in Swedish, or a person is in Lofa, or somehow Bokom Jiri, does not mean that they shouldn't know or hear what's being discussed here because of the distance. If confirmed, we will ensure that their rights to have information as citizens will be respected. Thank you, Chief. Um, <clears throat> so their rights will be respected based on the dissemination of information. I'd like to add that we try to do it in the language they understand. Let's bring ELBC news in Gribo in Rimaji, not series. Let our people hear and understand what we are talking about. So if there's any confusion, they will hear it from us here at this plenary. And they will have the, the, the right information to act on. So that said, I will leave this to Thank you, the government is not going to be able to do it. The government is not going to be able to do it. The government is not going to be able to do it. Well, it's a PRC decree. And again, uh, that is why when I heard that laws were being crafted, a bill was in the making, I said I would support it to the best of my ability, simply because all along this institution that we're talking about has been operating on a PRC decree. So that was the step. It is on the strength of that decree that you are nominated. Yes, Honorable what, Chairman. What's the functional, functional role? Of the broadcasting system, the broadcasting system, as contained in that decree, the functional role. The functional role, uh, according to my understanding, a copy of which I have here, is to promote growth and development, promote integration, promote rural communication, allow for our people to interact village to village, and what have you. It's a long list of things, but chiefly amongst them is what I have just cut along to you. To promote reconciliation and integration? Yeah. Did I say to be division? No, sir. Did I say to deny one sector of the public? No, sir. Will you allow critical opposition view you at station? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will allow critical opposition views because those people are Liberian citizens. How is the system LBS funded in keeping with that decree? Question. Sixty percent comes from the government. Forty percent is revenue generated, and because of that. Uh, in my statement, I ask for you to give us budgetary support because uh, the LBS, according to my understanding, was hard hit, and that's why they ran from 260 employees to 146 being understaffed. So if we are to get back, I'm appealing that the legislature look at the appropriations because 60% and having 40% come from revenue generation is not going to cut it, sir. Do you uh, have an appreciation of the wisdom behind why the system was required by that to create the law to fund itself 60% and the national budget does the balance 40%? Do you 
have an appreciation of the wisdom behind that question? Yes, sir. The, the government is providing the 60% and then the 40%. Yeah, is, right, right. But the wisdom behind it at the time saw that institution as the one eye man in the land of the blind. And that was in the 80s. Uh, they did not have serious competition. And there was market for uh, advertisement. There was market for campaigning. There was market for products, whatever. It's not like that today. There's a proliferation of radio and television stations, cables and everything, and that has changed. So the wisdom behind that cannot suffice any longer. So I don't want uh, a situation where we we'll need to make uh, But Mr. Nomini, I will disagree with you. I will disagree with you because radio is content. The content with our business and the more business and audience you have, you will have a business, you will do business. So if people are not doing business with EFBC, it is because of what EFBC has made itself into. Correct? Absolutely. So that's, that also should suggest to me that if you can restore the content of EFBC, the quality of the news, at a certain point in time, the headline of your BC News was about the president. The middle part of it was about the president. And even as they ended the news, if something about the president, they were putting on it. <laughs> so if the content and the, the programs were all hijacked by partisan programs. So the content, yeah, the content became poor and it became distasteful to the listening audience. So everybody gets your this. Do you have any intention to restore your business to what the actually was intended to see? Thank you, Honorable Senator, and I will share your wisdom, and I uh, will definitely work in that direction. Yes, it's not only my intention, I have the passion for it. Uh, during the years growing up, we only used to wait for that voice to say, split, baboos, Ali, Barkar, or oh, Ali. And don't forget to say goodbye before you leave. <laughs> goodbye. People just wanted to hear it. When television came on, there was Malawala Balawala, and people were running to be seated because there was probably no space in the living room. Yes, you are right. It had to do with content. When Victoria Ruffle or Wilma Bashmini or others came on, there were people running. Today, it's not like that. If confirmed, we will bring the programs, we will formulate the programs, and, and then make sure that the contents we provide to our people will encourage them to run to television or radio. You said the station, the entity is over staff. Yes, sir. So for a background 260 staff here, the entity is now at one for the service. Yes, sir. Even with the one for the service, there are people with intention. Yes, sir. Do you intend to take the passenger no, back to the background to the system. Sir, it will be, yes, I intend to make sure that the station, uh, the system is properly staffed. I've been assured by His Excellency, uh, President Joseph Newman Boaka, of his inflation commitment to making sure that happened. I know I have far-sighted and visionary leaders like you in the Senate who value your people very well. I believe that if confirmed, working with you, especially you, uh, in this committee, that that system will be brought up to par. How long is it going to take for you to start placing the president attacking the opposition? Question. I'm not sure I'll be in that position, sir. My job is clearly defined. My job is to formulate programs and policies to make the system work. My job will not be to praise a president but to make sure there's growth and development. What's the difference between your current role, should you be confirmed? 
and the role you occupied at the Ministry of Information, where you were being fat as a station in favor of government was in opposition question. Well, the difference there is clearly uh, defined. I have a role at LBS, and like I said repeatedly, is to formulate programs and policies. At the Ministry of Information, I was Deputy Minister for Press and Public Affairs. I was responding to uh, allegations. I was responding to uh, threats. I was responding to uh, people that saw the government in a certain way. And that is not, that, that will not be my role. Mr. Lomini, you are not here as a nominee of the Ministry of Information. Yes, sir. But you serve in a role before. Your performance sir. in a role, your conduct in a role, yes, sir. is also being questioned here. Yes, sir. What is the functional, key functional uh, wisdom behind the formation of the Ministry of Information is that you? That would be a question. Well, to be honest with you, Honorable Senator, up to today, I still ask myself the, the roles placed by the state-run broadcasting system, the office of the press secretary, the deputy minister for public affairs and the minister of state, the minister of information, and his four deputies to include the deputy minister for press and public affairs. However, Sir, it's government. It's not me. You have your husband. You. The, 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 the wisdom behind the formation of LPS in keeping with that decree, and the wisdom behind the formation of and the purpose for the formation or establishment of the Ministry of Information. Yes, yeah, sir, that's what my, that, that exactly was my response to you. That indeed, when you asked me the wisdom, I think that ministry was probably established before probably I was born in the 60s. I wouldn't know what they were thinking at the time. The, but the, when it comes the to. purpose as contained in the act. To propagate government's programs and policies. What are right there? What's the purpose contained in the decree established with LBS? Similarly. And that is to promote. So the others had to propagate. Did, and you, did you promote government policy and, and government reconciliation integration at the Ministry of Information? No, at the Ministry of Information, I was to propagate. Propagate what? Government programs and policies. Attack opposition? No, sir. Respond to opposition. Respond to opposition. Yes, sir. So even if the opposition is a member of the government, as in the legislature, and you choose to support the members of the legislature that are part of the ruling party. I do not recall going after members of the legislature in that. I do not recall you going after. So this so was here, similarly on our own, and denied that he did a video. He deleted the video from his page, and he came and challenged they said it. Yes, sir. What he did not know is that we had downloaded the video. Yes, sir. It was based upon which we denied him. They said it denied him. That's because he issued the threatening statements in the video when he came here and denied making the statements for a deception because he had deleted the video without knowing that we had downloaded the video. Yes, sir. I'm asking you again an order of. Yes, sir. Is there no video of you attacking government officials in the opposition question? Again, uh, Honorable Senator, like I said, the role I played in the government was the role I was assigned to play. So, uh, the, the, the purpose of the formation, the establishment of the Ministry of Information was to promote integration, government policies, government programs, and to inform the Nigerian people about what government was doing. Yes, sir. You chose to, to, to attack government officials who disagree constructively with the very government program because of the way it was being done. These are the protecting and promoting government officials for the ruling party. Correct? 
Again, I'm honorable I'm senator. I'm not, I'm not, yeah. Let me tie you. So I'm going to give you a microphone. Right. I'm going to have the microphone. Right. At your BS. Will you do the same? No, sir. My terms of reference are clear, and I've repeated that over and over. Then you come right back to me. There's, the terms of reference are not much different. Integration or, or reconciliation, promulgation of government policy. And government policy can be promulgated by diversion of views, diversity of views. For instance, we stay in this chamber, we debate issues pro and con, and they will derive a vote. But the Ministry of Information, including ERBC, will take opposition position for attack against the government, disrespectful, divisive, and, 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 and all of that stuff. And you are the Ministry of Information, you saw that as your role. By the time they said this senator disagreed with the president's budget, far from the vision. This other lawmaker here disagreed with the president flying private jet, far from the vision. Well, now I won. <laughs> now, we should say to your business to do the same question. No, sir. If confirmed, I've told you that I will be within the confines of the terms ascribed or subscribed to me, and that is to formulate programs and policies that will able to run the institution or the system. Thank you. Uh, ERBC is supposed to be across the country. Uh, you have Give us a gloomy picture or situation or state of your business as you know it. I'm sure you have some consultation. You know everything that is wrong at your business. What will be your anticipated monthly income? Question. Well, I've never worked at LBS before. But I am told that the Director General of LBS makes anywhere between 3000 to 4000 That's what I was made to understand by people who's been there before, but I've never been there before, but that's what I was told. So the people told you that 200, 200, assisted, but, uh, 200 assisted employees were in place and 146 then now. Uh, yes. This what told you 37, 39, and 7 hours out of Well, that was what I was told, sir. Is there a Yes, sir. My father. Oh, sir. You are busy, like my colleagues have said, and our concerns. It's supposed to disseminate government programs and information to our people. I think you are busy power the country. And you need to engage with community radio station. Since you've done a, an assessment of the situation at your business, to know how many gallons of fuel you need per hour, the cost of a generator, and all that stuff. Have you done a budget program with after that budget with the cost of what you, what you need to get money? Well, based on what I know so far, and the uh, conversations I've held so far, uh, LBS stands at about one million eighty-six thousand. By eighty-five percent of that is for salaries. To run an effective system, again, uh, will require a team sitting down and putting together a real budget. But in estimation, you will need around two million dollars to at least be able to put together what we are asking for. We also uh, have said to some individuals that if confirmed, we will look at alternative energies, especially for our substations in the various counties, to at least cut back on the huge budget uh, allotment for fuel. The vice chairman of this committee asked a question. 
and I want to keep it back from it as to why now. When the budget of the country is submitted to the legislature, it's about five to six hundred page document. The media, most times, and see left people, take the budget, five to six hundred page document, and open it to the portion that has a legislature. And if it is a seven hundred million budget, the legislature has 65 million. That 65 million is the discussion for the whole year. Nobody talks about 65 taking away from the balance that is left of 700 million. And the reason most of the people think the legislature does, should not even exist is because the, the private media, and rightfully too, will take excerpt, excerpt of who said what during session, during committee hearings, especially it depends on the editorial policy of that media institution. So media institution, editorial policy, and nothing positive will be on our station about this other politician or this other government. <laughs> Some media editorial policy. If we can find anything negative about this government official or the government entity, we will not promote it even if they do something positive. Only ELBC can do that generally for the people. Do you, do you consider, or will you make this a business to have your business bring live the Senate deliver version Tuesday and Thursday? Do you commit to doing that? <coughs> now, this is not a compulsion. This is not something that you must say because you want to be confirmed. There's not something that you must compare yourself to say the untruth or the oath. But you want to look into that so that the people of this country, the only people who know what's happening here are the people, especially on social media, who have data to work, to listen to what's happening here. But there are very few women abroad. Will you bring the Senate deliberation on your business? Thank you once again. Honorable Chairman, let me make this firm commitment, not to be confirmed. It is the right of the people to be informed of how the government function. It is not a privilege. If confirmed, I said to you and to, to this committee and to this honorable body, the rights of the people to be informed will be respected. And that is, if you do the people business here, Tuesdays and Thursdays, it is the right to be informed I promise you, if confirmed, the Liberian people will enjoy the right to be informed. And that is, ELBC will cover so that you can say to the people what you say in here, and the people can watch it and hear it for themselves and not be told. So, this committee, in collaboration. Chairman, yeah. before you can close up. Let me just follow, make a follow up on almost your last question. Liberia is the only country I know in our region where the private media system, they are more respected in the country than the private institutions. In Liberia is the reverse. How do you intend to deal with this? Thank you, Honorable Senator. The state-run broadcasting system is not a secret. I will hire the best, and I will take the best in the business, and we will do the Liberian people the justice that they deserve in broadcasting. Mr. Nominee, thank you. This committee 
for what could be up using the Ministry of Information so that we can change the narrative. Yeah. So that we can be what we should be. When the budget comes, we can assure our people that we will work with the budget. For government, what if it is breaking news? The people must hear it on ELBC first so they can be authentic. So they can be credible. Let it be on ELBC first. Nominations in government. Anything. President's sake, President Powell. Anything. Let's let our part. Everything. It must be on ELBC. We must empower ELBC that you should change the content. So that ELBC can be what? That enable still broadcaster that we look into this. So that people can be proud to wear the ELBS ID card once again. I want to thank you, uh, distinguished members of the committee. I want to thank you. And at this point in time, we have the Sadia Arms to discharge the nominee. After which, we have been in the And then, the fact the first and the second one of After which, we have been in the And then, uh, then, the end of the day, can you ask, please, to list the nominee from one of us? Yes, sir. The power of the city, and the chair, who gives me the broadcast, and I get that discharge. The question for, uh, uh, about ERBC and Ministry of Information, I saw if I know right there. That's great. <laughs> And so, Father, we thank you for the day. We give you the glory. We give you the honor of all. As we are about to leave, we pray that God, the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, will rest upon us and empower with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Well, you just uh, follow the confirmation hearing of the Director General Designate of the Liberia Broadcasting System. Former Minister Eugene Lamy Fagon. This committee is being chaired by Senator Abraham Darius DeLong of Montserrat County. He was questioned uh, by several senators here at this hearing today Senator Edwin Melvin Snow of uh, Bome County, Senator Wellington Jeevon Smith, and uh, other senators here who asked some critical questions to the LBS Director General Designate. Well, folks, this is Spoon TV. We've been coming to you live here from the Liberian Senate. So we'll come your way again. I'm Nelson Collet. Have a good day and bye-bye for now.